Good morning and welcome to the Morning Scoop for Thursday, November 12th. This is your daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Moore. The Maryland game is not happening. The game against Michigan is in 30 days. Uh, the news of the day is that game that is not happening this weekend. Uh, Ohio State and Maryland had their game canceled after eight players in the Terps program tested positive for COVID in the last week. Uh, my guest today is Buckeye Scoop's Mark Giffler. Mark, this is something that I think we all knew was a possibility at some point this fall, but yeah, it still kind of really stinks. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate timing just because I think um, going into the season, I think we just thought this was kind of a throwaway game. And uh, as it turns out, you know, Maryland's actually playing pretty well right now. And I think it would have been a nice uh, test for the Buckeyes here. Uh, get Try and get some things figured out on defense. And um, certainly any Saturday right now in the fall without college football is, is kind of disappointing as it is. So, um, but yeah, this this uh, turned into to be maybe a decent little matchup. And, um, you know, just unfortunate we're not going to have it. Yeah, I have. Uh, this is in in the interest of full disclosure. This is the second uh, Thursday morning morning scoop episode that I have recorded today. Uh, the first one was with Andy Koska, the Maryland beat writer from the Washington Times. We recorded really early on Wednesday morning and had a great show. Uh, you can watch it on the front page of BuckeyeScoop.com if you uh, still are interested in learning a whole bunch about Maryland football. Great conversation. Uh, but yeah, that was that was kind of the general tone of that conversation. It was like, where the heck did Maryland come from? You know that they were just terrible, terrible, terrible in week one. And all of a sudden looked like, oh man, this is suddenly one of the biggest games of the schedule. Um, now it's going to go down as a no contest, you know, not a forfeit. So the Buckeyes who did absolutely nothing wrong will now only be able to go eight. No, instead of nine, no, before the college football playoff committee makes its decision. I mean, that's not likely to make a huge difference, but Mark, I mean, if they lose another game or two between now and then this could turn into a problem for the Buckeyes and, you know, potentially for a lot of other teams across the country as well. Yeah. I don't think this one's going to hurt Ohio state much. Um, I think it, you know, as weird as it sounds, next week has to get played, um, just because of the implications of that, you know, with 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 Indiana. Um, but um, you know, eight and oh, nine and oh, I don't think it makes much of a difference. Um, I think Ohio State's in great shape right now. Um, just gotta keep gotta get these games in, make sure, make sure they get played. Um, it is interesting though. It, it's gonna it's gonna make this even more complicated, I think, if if you know, we start seeing teams only playing six, seven games, you know, how that's going to, you know, affect things. And, um, you know, the winner, the winners right now are probably teams like USC and Oregon, who we all thought might be way behind the eight ball with, uh, with the scheduling. But if, if those teams can get their seven games in, I mean, they might be looking just fine. Yeah. The, the gap between the teams that played a lot of games and the players, teams that are not playing a lot of games is getting maybe a little smaller. You know, if the, if the Pac-12 and the Big Ten can get through most of their schedules, all of a sudden, you know, I mean, more than half of the SEC is canceled for this week. So you're seeing, uh, you know, those total number of games shrinking in a lot of different conferences. I mean, you mentioned the Indiana game next week. Uh, Tony Gerdeman and I wrote something Wednesday night to try and answer, you know, basically all of the different questions that we saw from people asking, you know, about why it's not a forfeit and how the decision is made and, and all of that. But one of them, there's a very popular conspiracy theory on uh, on Twitter.com. There have been a bunch of those recently, but uh, this one was about uh, Indiana. And what if Indiana just, you know, Indiana gets a, a bunch of convenient cases of COVID next week and it can't play and then runs the table. So Indiana finishes 7-0, and Ohio State finishes 6-0. and You know, who, who wins the Big Ten East at that point? And uh, the answer is it goes down to like the fourth tiebreaker, which is cross-divisional opponent record and... You know, then it's entirely possible that the Buckeyes would lose based on that because Indiana is playing uh, Wisconsin and Purdue cross division. Those teams are a combined three and zero, and Ohio State's cross divisional opponents are uh, Illinois and Nebraska, and those teams have not yet won a game. So, you know, it is entirely possible. I mean, you know, granted, a lot of stuff would have to happen for that to end up mattering in that exact situation to play out. But you know, it is kind of crazy that. Games like Indiana, Maryland, and Indiana, Ohio State could be end up being like the biggest games in the conference this fall. Yeah, it, it's. Uh, I mean, uh, on one hand, it's been super surprising. On the other hand, we kind of expected the. You know, we, we kind of said coming into the season, you know, expect the unexpected. Well, we're getting that. We're getting a. We're getting some crazy. I mean, you look at some of these the, the standings, and they look nothing like you might have anticipated they would look. And that's. It's not just a Big Ten thing so far. I mean, there's. There's been some team. I mean, my gosh, look at, you know, you look at it like LSU and the SEC and what's happened to them and, and Arkansas is competitive. And, 
it's it's just chaos everywhere right now and it's it really is um you know i know everyone wants to pick the team apart right now on on defense and then you know, some of the other things you know the tackling and this and that this that and the other but it really uh just just find a way to win each saturday make sure your game gets played and then once it once once you know you're actually teeing it up go ahead and, and just however you got to win it you just win the game and, and you, you don't worry about anything else uh, this year it's just uh it, it's it's crazy it's, it's it's as crazy as we thought it might be yeah i mean you can you can find that article that tony and i wrote at uh, buckeyescoop.com that is outside the paywall um lots of interesting questions and answers i think in there that you guys might enjoy uh there is a scenario where if ohio state and indiana both lose once and uh maryland wins out um you could have a three-way tie and it could potentially be maryland northwestern for the big 10 championship like it is However weird you think this year could be, like, buckle up. It could get much weirder. Um, one of the biggest issues right now that, that's kind of making, you know, setting up these, like, real weird tiebreaker scenarios is the Big Ten pushed back its schedule far enough that it left absolutely zero margin for error. You know, there are no open weeks to make up games right now. With this game canceled, more than half of the SEC not playing this week due, due to COVID issues, it seems like it might make sense to slide the college football playoff back a couple weeks to let teams get in more of a normal schedule i mean am i wrong there mark does does that not make some sense well what what would have made sense was just doing this from the beginning and playing out a spaced out schedule um starting it mid to late september giving whether play you want to play every other week you want to throw in four or five bye weeks however you want to do this but they had time to space this season out and they they could have moved the playoff until you know the week before or the week after the Super Bowl. You wouldn't have hurt anybody. <laughs> no one, no one would have been affected by that. As far you know, I, the bowl system you can can be flexible. I mean, I'm sure the Rose Bowl could have been moved to a different date. I, I don't think the world would have ended if that would have happened. You know, um, it, just a lack of foresight here. Um, you know, even leading up to the official announcement of of the Big Ten returning to play, we all thought maybe it'd be a week earlier on the start you know we thought it might be the 17th or whatever and that's proving to be uh, another another misstep where if you teed it up on the 17th some of these problems wouldn't be as big of problems as they are right now and um you'd have some flexibility here i just it, it never it made sense to play football this fall but it didn't make sense to do it in a in a scenario where there's no margin for error and there's no flexibility i mean it just um just bizarre you mentioned the Rose Bowl there. I mean, that's one of the the reason the Big Ten or the college football playoff semifinals this year are on New Year's Day is because it's the year when it's the Rose Bowl and the Sugar Bowl as the semifinals. The Rose Bowl is insistent that it plays on New Year's Day. It plays on New Year's Day. It plays on New Year's Day. If New Year's Day falls on a Sunday, then it'll play on Monday. That's okay. But otherwise, it plays on New Year's Day. And uh, you know, other years, the playoff semifinals are the 28th, 29th, whatever it is. When it's the Rose Bowl and the Sugar Bowl, it's on New Year's Day. However, part of that is the tie-in with the Tournament of Roses Parade, which happens earlier in the morning out in Pasadena. There is no 2021 Tournament of Roses Parade. It has been canceled. So, you know, maybe this is a year that the, the Rose Bowl and the Sugar Bowl are a little more flexible and willing to move off that January 1st date. If so, yeah, maybe you have championship games, college uh, conference championship games on New Year's Day, selection show on January 2nd or 3rd, semifinals a couple of weeks after that. I mean, heck, play the national title game on the Saturday before the Super Bowl if you want to. If you don't want to do it the week before or the week after, do it do it on the Saturday, the day before the Super Bowl. Like, make that an incredible football weekend. Like, there's there are ways to solve this issue that do not involve, uh, you know, uh, trying to cram uh, twelve pounds of season into a six pound bag at this point. But uh, yeah, I mean, and and there have been a bunch of ideas floated this week about okay, well, if Ohio State can't play uh, Maryland, oh. You know who else isn't playing this weekend? Alabama. What if Ohio State and Alabama played this weekend? Ah, ha, ha. Uh, you saw some uh, Twitter.com personalities put that forth that as, uh, oh, yo, maybe this is going to happen. Mark, I'll let you explain the, I don't know, 147 different reasons why that is definitely not going to happen. Well, let's just set aside for a minute the fact that the Big Ten is not going to allow that to happen. Let's, let's, you know, let's play the hypothetical out. As great as it sounds for the fans and as fun as it might be for some players and, and people to joke about on Twitter, there is not a single human being in either one of those programs that would actually want to do this. It, it doesn't make any sense. There's, w- there is no benefit to this. 
you you have two teams who have the inside track on a, not only a playoff spot but potentially the top two seeds in the playoffs. They have they have a, a very um, clear path. It's a path that isn't super difficult. Yes, you know Alabama, you know will probably have to beat Florida, who's a good team, and Ohio State along the way somewhere is probably gonna have to play a couple of decent teams. But um, you know, Indiana's better than we thought. I don't know if they're a great team by any stretch, but it's it's a pretty well laid out for both of those teams, and to the point that almost certainly I think Alabama could lose a game in the next couple of weeks and still get to the playoff and win the SEC. But I even think that Ohio State could potentially lose the right game. It, it can't be Indiana probably at this point, but I think there's a I think Ohio State could stub its toe at some point and still have a shot at making the playoffs. So why would you give away your cushion by playing each other? One of you, one of you is going to lose that game, and one of you will then be in a situation where you can't lose a game, which, you know, everyone's like, well, the, the loser wouldn't be out. Well, no, the loser wouldn't be out, but the loser would then not have the cushion they have right now, which is that they could actually maybe lose a game and still get in the playoffs. So nobody wants to do that. It's on 72 hours notice. You're going to game plan for Alabama. And oh, by the way, if you're Ohio State, you play Indiana next week. That's like your biggest, you know, we laugh at it, but it, it literally is probably the biggest game of the season is, is this Indiana game. You want to play Alabama before you have to get ready for that? Are you kidding me? I, it, it's just, it's not even, it's not even on anyone's radar. It's it's hilarious to even think about. So, so I'm hearing maybe, is that, is that what I'm hearing? Is that what, is right, that it? Yeah, exactly. maybe I'll, you're telling me there's a chance. Uh, now, yeah, now the biggest question is, how does this affect Ohio State's college football playoff chances? I mean, you just said the Indiana game is, you know, kind of a, you know, they can't afford to lose that one. I, I don't know if they if they lose that game, but Indiana loses to Wisconsin and Purdue later in the year or something like that. Or, you know, I, I don't know. I don't remember who else I have left on their schedule off the top of my head. But, you know, you, you, they lose another one um, or lose to Michigan State this weekend, which is, you know. T- tell me you have a great high deal, high, <laughs> tell me you have a high level of confidence about anything at this point this year uh, you know they lose to Ohio State loses one and they still win the Big Ten Championship I still think they're in at that point but you know I mean I guess overall just this week alone missing one game my my thought that this has functionally zero impact in Ohio State's college football playoff chances what about you no I agree I it, it's not you know and it's not even you know look Maryland is playing better than we thought they'd be playing at this point, but no, no one's good. I don't think anyone in that committee is going to sit there and be like, well, they just, you know, they, they had a chance to get that quality win against Maryland and it's just not on the resume. So I don't think we can put this undefeated, you know, Ohio state team. And I, that's just not, that's just not going to be a thing. So, um, you know, again, it's, I think it's unfortunate the game wasn't played. I think there was a lot of things. I think there's some things they still need to iron out um, defensively and even offensively a little bit with, with the interior of the offensive line. And, any chance you get to do that is is probably a, a good learning experience at this point. But in terms of hurting their playoff chances, I mean, it's 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 a non-factor unless unless this becomes a trend. You know, obviously you, you can't lose three or four of these games. I mean, you can't all of a sudden you know get half your schedule wiped out. But um, as as a one-off, not not an issue. And it seems like at this point, I think there's sort of a growing national consensus that Ohio State, Clemson, uh, and Alabama are you know. Those are the three top teams. If everyone's healthy, those are the three top teams. There's probably not a close fourth. You know, Notre Dame had a nice win over Clemson last week, and there's you know the Trevor Lawrence asterisk, and there's they were missing a couple of players on defense as well. So there's a little bit of an asterisk on that one, but you know, I mean, it, right right now, I think it would take a lot to have Ohio State, Alabama, or Clemson fall out. You know, I think they probably need to lose two games each, and you know, Clemson's halfway there now. But yeah, I, I, I get the impression that there's probably a little bit of a margin for error there for for all those teams. Uh, one question that was raised on our board on uh, Wednesday night that we do not have the answer to yet that we will probably find out from Ryan Day later today is, will Ohio State be doing some kind of a scrimmage inside the stadium on uh, Saturday to sort of replace that uh, replace that Maryland game? My guess would be yes. I think we will we'll probably hear from Ryan Day. My guess would be they're going to try and keep this as close to a uh, a normal game week as they can and stay in that routine and not have that like weird off week and all of that. So. That'll be something we will uh, be reporting on for you a little bit later on today at BuckeyeScoop.com. Uh, another game that uh, actually football game, let's talk about an actual game, football game that actually did happen. Uh, you saw a couple of the top 2023 20, players in the nation play last weekend in uh, the Ohio high school playoffs. Uh, what were your impressions of Sonny Styles and Brennan Vernon? Yeah, so um, 
first time seeing Brennan Vernon live. And, you know, it's unfortunate. He's coming off an injury. You can tell he's not all the way. He's not all the way there yet. Um, played extremely hard. Um, had, a, had a few pressures. I don't know if he got, he, there was a play along the side. He might have, he might have actually registered a sack. He got, uh, made a nice play along the sideline there. It was, you know, I'm not the statistician, so I'm not sure if they actually credit him for it or not, but uh, made a few nice plays coming down the line scrimmage against the run. Um, definitely has the look, definitely has, uh, you know, the, the, the quickness and strength. You just, you could tell there were some plays he got up a little slow. It just wasn't quite all there, but uh, definitely a, kind of a warrior kind of effort there from him because um, they were going to need him to, to have a shot. And then uh, Pick Central did win the game 38 um, 31. Sonny was a guy I've seen quite a bit of as advertised again. Um, so many plays across the middle. He just strikes fear into people. It's it's like watching, it's like an old school safety. Now, I don't think he's going to play safety in college. I think he's headed for linebacker. And gosh, he could even be like a Von Miller uh, type of edge rusher, even. But um, he just, when he comes, when he comes downhill, he is, he's arriving with bad intentions. He laid another couple of big hits there on, on Friday, um, was, was around the football quite a bit and um, just a, just a supremely talented athlete at, at almost six, four, 200 pounds already as a, as a sophomore. Uh, these two guys are going to be really good. Um, probably the best one, two punch at the top of the Ohio rankings in, in a long time. I think, I think that's, I think it's going to shake out that way. All right, I'm going to go ahead and be bold and ask the question that everyone who's listening is right now thinking in their heads. So are they going to go to Ohio State? What do you think, Mark? I I would be very surprised if they both didn't end up at Ohio State. Um, I, I That's been the kind of dream school for both kids. There is the uh, factor with Sonny, with with uh, his older brother, Lorenzo Jr., being um, being a Notre Dame commit. Um, they're, they're both, they're very close, but they're also very different personalities. Um, and, and Lorenzo even, you know, was able to kind of hook Sonny up with the Ohio state staff at one point, um, while Lorenzo was committed to Notre Dame. So, uh, he's going to do what's best, you know, for him, for his younger brother and his younger, you know, Sonny's going to do what's best for himself. So, um, I, you know, and of course, you know, we have the, the brothers thing, you know, Ohio state, Notre Dame, if there's one thing they do over the last decade. It's they, they split, they split brothers, uh, on the recruiting trail. Um, they, they just do. So, uh, I guess it's Ohio state's turn on this one. Um, but yeah, I, I suspect both will end up in the uh, in the, my, my way too early mock twenty twenty three class. <laughs> yes, I've got them both penciled in. Yeah, twenty twenty three is a little a little ways away. We will we will let you write that one in pencil, no matter how confident you may be. Uh, it's uh, it is a long way to the signing day twenty twenty three, but uh, we'll let you let you uh, at least at least get your first word in on that. So, uh, Mark, thank you for joining us. Uh, we will uh, have a whole bunch more coverage this week of boy, what, what an interesting week this has been in Ohio state football, <laughs> a competitive game against Rutgers for a while, a COVID canceled game against Maryland. Like, boy, this is, may you live in interesting times as the saying goes, we are definitely living in interesting times. Uh, and there is a massive, massive game coming up next week against Indiana. Again, it's been a weird year. So, uh, you can check all, uh, all of our great coverage out at Buckeyescoop.com. Great time to be a member. We have a ton of great recruiting coverage as well as uh, great insider access to the team. Nevada Buck has had a couple really, really, really interesting insider reports on stuff that's been going on in practice, uh, game grades uh, for some of the players at Rutgers. I mean, it has been a really, really fascinating week at the site. This would be a great time to be a member. And, uh, you know, Christmas is coming up. If you, uh, if you uh, know a Buckeye fan or are a Buckeye fan, might be a good Christmas gift. Uh, membership to BuckeyeScoop.com. Uh, a lot, lot better than another pair of socks or a tie or anything like that. So, might uh, might be a good thing to uh, if you are giving someone a gift, give them that gift. And if you are uh, looking for that gift, drop a hint to uh, your spouse or your kids or your parents or whoever it might be. Get me a membership to BuckeyeScoop.com for Christmas. It's all I want. And uh, with that, thank you guys for joining us. Have a great day. We will talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>